Okay, today what we want to do is uh, look at a phase diagram and um, do a basic analysis that you would be expected to manage on the uh, quizzes or exams. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of information, obviously, in the phase diagram. And so let's look at this. This is the cobalt titanium diagram. And let's start out by um, just doing some general uh, characteristics of the diagram. Over on the right hand side is our pure titanium. And so if we ask the question how much cobalt will dissolve in titanium, um, we're moving from right to left on this diagram as we add cobalt. And so we see, well, there's two different kinds of titanium. So there's beta titanium and alpha titanium. There's two morphs. Um, this is a polymorphic metal, so it changes crystal structures uh, with temperature. And in the beta phase, we can dissolve quite a bit of cobalt, actually 17.1% by weight uh, cobalt, 82.9% titanium, and the remainder would be cobalt. And then we see an alpha titanium, a very, very poor solubility. Um, this looks like on the order of just a couple of percent, although it's not labeled. And, uh, so we see that there. The flip side would be the titanium solubility in cobalt. We, cobalt is not polymorphic, so there's a single phase region here. And then obviously as we add titanium, we're moving to the right, and we reach a maximum solubility of 9.1% at 1200 degrees. And uh, so you can find the solubility limits. Let's look at um, what's going on at one of these points. So if we look at point A, uh, there's uh, remember four pieces of information that we can pull off of a phase diagram about the state of a material at a particular combination of temperature and composition. So the first thing is, what is the overall composition? And point A is, is for an alloy that is 70% titanium by weight. So first thing we might want to find at A is that this is 70 weight percent titanium. And you may want to record that. The second thing to identify uh, about the state of the point is how many phases are present and what those phases are. Now remember, this is a single phase region. Eta is an intermediate compound here, so it's a phase region that has no width. It just exists in a single composition. And so this is a two-phase region containing eta plus beta titanium. And the parentheses tell us this is not the element beta titanium, the beta form of the element titanium. This is a phase that is primarily beta titanium with some uh, fraction of cobalt uh, dissolved. Okay, so first two pieces of information, and we can write down here two phases, eta plus beta titanium, so things I'd be expect you to find for me uh, on a quiz or exam. Okay, now then the two other questions have to do with uh, what is the composition of each of these phases. So if I were to separate out all of the eta, and ask you how much cobalt and how much titanium is in the eta phase. And similarly, I was to separate out all the beta titanium into a little pile and do x-ray or something on it and identify that. So we call that the composition of each of the phases. What is each phase made of? So to get that, we draw a tie line. And where that tie line intersects the phase boundaries, we read straight down. Now, this one boundary is labeled for us. It's very nice. It's 62. And this one's not labeled, but it looks like it's about 89% titanium. So the composition of the eta phase only can be 62%. So if we come down, we would say for our third piece of information, the composition of the eta phase is 62% titanium. Obviously, then it's 38% cobalt. Similarly, the composition of the beta titanium phase is 89% titanium and 11% cobalt. All right, so we now know who's present, what each of these is made of and in terms of their composition, and then the last question, it would be how much eta and how much beta titanium are present in the system. Well, we're going to use the reverse lever law to do this. So if we label that point with its value, 70, this lever arm is length 8, 
and we'll do that in different color. So that's 8. And this length, 70 to 89, is 19. The total length of the lever is therefore 27. So remember the reverse lever law says the proportion of beta titanium present is equal to the opposite length of the arm divided by the total length. So for my last point here, I'll do it in the border here, point D, the proportion of beta titanium is going to be opposite 8 over 27, and the proportion of my eta phase is going to be 19 over 27. Now remember, once you get these, they better add to 20, they better add to 1, 27 over 27, which they do. And whichever boundary you're closer to, that should be the majority um, fraction. And in fact, we're closer to the eta phase, and it is the majority, or the major phase in this case. All right, a couple of other interesting points that maybe we want to take a look at here. There's several points that are potentially invariants. It's not that they all are, but a couple of them um, that are worth looking at. Remember, for invariance, um, we're talking about a point at which three phases uh, exist in equilibrium, three different phases. And so the first point would be this that's labeled I. And up above, we have the liquid phase, the molten material. And down below, we have these two phases we've just talked about. So I have a single phase above turning into two phases below. Since the single phase is on top, this makes a V. That looks a lot like the U in a U tech. And then the question is, what is this? What are the systems? Does this involve liquid, or is it all solids? And obviously, we have a liquid involved. So that's a eutectic system. Liquids are icky and sticky, and that's going to end in eutectic. Now we have an invariant down here at 90.1. Again, single phase, beta titanium above. Down below, we now have eta plus alpha titanium. So there's a crystal structure change. There's a big solubility difference. So there's quite a bit of diffusion needing to go on as beta titanium transforms to alpha plus um, alpha titanium plus eta. So that's a single phase above turning to two below. And again, the single phase is above, so it looks like a U. So it's a U-tech, but this is all solids, so it's a U-tech toid reaction, not a U-tectic. All right, other points of interest. Point three, there's a V here, single phase in the V, but it's a single phase turning to a liquid, and this is a single phase at a composition other than a pure element that's acting like a pure element. Remember, pure elements melt at individual temperatures. So cobalt melts at 1494, and titanium melting temperature is kind of off the scale here. Um, actually, 1672, so we could label that up there, but melts at fairly high temperature. Um, so this acts like a pure element, and we call that congruent melting. It's an intermediate uh, composition. It's not pure element, obviously, but it behaves like a pure element in its melting behavior, at least. All right, a couple of other important points. Anytime you have an intermediate compound that terminates like this, not on a, a liquidus line, you have to look at this point, because up above, there's a two-phase region, zeta plus liquid. And then obviously, if we cool down through here, right at that point, there are three phases in equilibrium, zeta, liquid, and eta. So that's two phases turning to one. The one phase is down below, so it needs a periscope. So that's a peritech. And then this is liquid involved, so it's sticky or icky. So it's a peritectic. And there are no peritectoids on this system. Um, we have additional peritectics here at the top of the gamma region. There's another eutectic in this V, this two-phase region down here, liquid above, and peritectics here and there. Okay, so it's a fairly busy diagram, a bunch of invariant points, um, and worth looking at. All right, so I hope that helps.